Watch fans, welcome back. We're going to be flying right into Breitling. We're going to be looking at the Never Timer and Never Timer World. Stay tuned. All right, so today we're going to do two things. We're going to look at one of my favorite watches. Uh, you guys know I do have a lot of favorites, and it's simply because I kind of like to collect. For me, this wound up being something that is just naturally a great hobby. It is fun, and you know, once in a while, as time changes, let's just say something like the pandemic, it pays off to have these kind of uh, fun hobbies hanging around. So today we're going to look at the Never Timer and Never Timer World, and we're also going to look at how to. This is actually just to help you so that when you are ready to set your Never Timer or your Never Timer World, you actually know what it can do. We'll even have a little fun secret tip on one of the rules of three at the end of the video that's gonna kind of be fun and it'll show you how you can actually use your slide rule bezel. So with this piece itself, you do get a ton of varieties that you can actually choose from. The one that I'm actually gonna be holding today, this is the Never Timer World. We're gonna use this because it is one of the more advanced out of the group. This one simply has the additional GMT hand. So we all know with all of our standard watches, they're gonna tell the time. That's really fun. This one has that added complication of a chronograph. A chronograph is actually a stopwatch. That's gonna be the sub dials or those three smaller circles. One of those circles actually becomes your real second hand. That one should continuously run. That means that the big hand, the large hand that we grew up watching as kids, that hand does not move all the time. That one is simply controlled by your pushers. Your pushers are gonna be the top buttons where you start and stop. The bottom button is actually gonna be made for resetting. That is the feature that controls the chronograph. Now you can use it for things as simple as maximizing your time and your energy and saying, hey, you know what? I don't wanna spend more than 20 minutes on this project but I know I have a call that's gonna be coming up shortly afterwards. And so I need to be able to focus on my timing for myself, right? The other thing that you can use it for too though, if you actually use this during the right times, which means starting it at 12 o'clock, whether it be noon or afternoon for you, we could say, or midnight. When you're looking at it, if you start that chronograph at one of those times, because it's a 12 hour counter, guess what it does? it now becomes a GMT. So for each and every one of the actual chronographs, you can use them as a GMT. That's something I always like to remind people because we never use it and we've already paid for the function. Why not explore it? Why not use it? Why not make use of that extra feature that you've already paid for? But with the Navitimer World, it actually gives a GMT hand. With that extra GMT hand as well, that means I have the choice. I now can keep up to three different time zones at once, or I can use my two time zones and I can use the stopwatch feature as well. I can do this, this watch and manipulate it how I choose what's best and what's most beneficial for me. It's a great feeling, right? That's something that we all want to be able to do. Make this work for you. Make your money work for you. That is exactly what your money is supposed to do. So now we're actually going to look at the fact that you can actually do this piece in stainless steel. It is also going to be offered in the uh, solid rose for Breitling as well. And some of my favorite features where you can actually get them now, where you do have the steel with the rose gold bezel. I feel that the steel with the rose gold bezel is actually going to be a really good purchase simply because I get the 18 karat solid gold on the bezel with the stainless steel case. It also makes it where it's not as strong. It's not as aggressive. So I get a piece that is a little bit more calm and more soothing for every day. So if I still want to wear it with a suit, I can. But for me, a lot of time you guys know, I use my Breitling on vacation. If I'm not wearing a Tudor, it's definitely going to be Breitling. My Rolex is something that I have fun in, but I probably do more fishing and things like that in it. So with the Breitling itself, because it is an aviator's timepiece, it is made and it has ties to true aviation. That's where the last feature that we're going to talk about comes in. That's going to be the slide rule. The slide rule is actually the bezel. For a lot of people, they don't realize that this bezel has a real purpose. Its purpose was actually created before pilots actually had all the tools that they currently have now inside of their cockpit. 
With this, I can do multiplication and division. Being able to do multiplication and division, I'd actually be able to track or map out exactly where I am on my travels, as well as be able to know my cost of gas. And that was going to be a huge thing because for a pilot, you want to take into account all the costs and variations that you'll need, as well as your mapping. Those are always going to be big things for you. So now let's get into the how to version of what we're going to do today. When we look at this watch again, we talked earlier about the chronograph start and stop button at the top. OK, reset button is at the bottom. The first thing I always want you to do is I want you to wind the watch because the number one thing that we hear a lot of times is that my watch is not working. Well, it's not that the watch is not working. We haven't given it the energy and the power that it needs to make it function properly. So what we're going to do is the first thing we're going to do is we're going to wind the crown and stem with our fingers. We want to do on this watch at least about 40 to 60 turns. I know that your manual may say something different and that's okay. They're also mentioning full turns, which the human hand is not really capable of doing. It would mean that we would have to turn the watch sideways or on the side to be able to even do it three quarters of the way around. So whatever you see inside your manual, typically the rule of thumb is double it. So we're going to do about 40 to 60 turns on the crown. This is going to transfer the energy from our hands into the watch itself. That's going to allow the watch to be completely powered by us, right? Which is what we all want, a working watch. That's what we paid for. After I do my turns, I can actually use my chronograph by pushing the top button. And as I do so, I'll see that the second hand, which is the large hand that we grew up seeing, the one that hasn't been moving at all, is now starting to move. It will actually go around for a full 60 seconds. That's a full rotation. At that time, one of the other sub dials will pick up the minute counter. That one will actually keep up to 30 minutes in tracking and it will move its hands into the hour counter, which actually does up to 12 hours. Those are the functions you'll see. If I want to stop, simply push the top button again. That's going to stop it. If I want to restart it, I can simply do it again and stop again. When I'm ready to, I can actually reset my chronograph by pushing the bottom button. When I push it, if you notice, it actually flies back or goes back to zero. That means that it is properly functioning when it goes back to that place. The watch will not go back there if I don't make it. These are my engaging points, okay? That's the key thing to remember. As far as my date in my GMT hand, I can actually control that by using the crown. When I pull the crown out, I do want to use my fingernails or fingertips so that I can get just enough actually on there. Because I'm doing it upside down, of course, it is going to be a little bit more for me. But when I'm doing this, I can control the date wheel by turning away from me or forward. I can control the GMT hand by turning backwards. The first thing you want to do when you set your GMT is what we call zeroing out. If you set your GMT hand to the 12 o'clock position and you set your hour hands by pulling out again, and now I have full control of the hands, I can actually set everything to zero, which is 12. 12 is zero. Now, let's say I'm not traveling because I have those hands set to zero. Guess what it does for me? It's going to allow automatically for my home time, which is the red hand, the additional time zone, to automatically work and function in sync with my other hands. So if I'm not traveling, I don't need it. It's already preset as long as I zeroed out the watch before I set the time. Again, that means putting everything to 12 o'clock, straight up and down, okay? After that, I can actually set the time to whatever my current time zone is gonna be. We'll pull that out. Once we pull that out, it does give us, again, the controls and functions to change the time. Once we do that and we set the time for what we want, sync it, close it, you're good to go. Again, if you need to change your GMT hand, the first click using your fingernails or your fingertips, that is actually what's going to allow you to move that GMT hand so that you can have it set for the proper time zone you would like to use. Lastly, we're going to look at how to use your slide rule bezel. This bezel is a simple and easy, smooth, no resistant bezel. Yes, you're going to have to put a little bit of power into it, simply because remember, this is made for a pilot, more so a fighter pilot. So he's wearing gloves most times. 
And because of that, the ridges that are actually on there are made for your fingers to be grabbed inside of the glove. So when I'm actually turning this, I want a little resistance, but it should still feel very, very smooth. If it's not, it may just mean that you need to have under your bezel cleaned. That is not an issue. That's just something that can actually be done at home or something that you can actually take to your local jeweler or which we always hope since you are a Swiss watch expo expert at buying and you know that this is the best place to buy at all times, you can always give us a call. We're here to assist you, not just sell. We are here for you. We want a real relationship with you forever. So with the bezel, one of the things that we're going to go over is the rule of three. We're actually going to use multiplication today. What we're going to do is we're going to actually look at or division, you could actually say, because whatever you do, it's the opposite on this watch. That's the rule of three. So let's say, for example, we know that we're going to buy 12 gallons of gas. What we would do is we would look at the inside ring and we're going to look for the number 12. If that 12 gallons of gas cost us $70, we're going to then look for the 70 on the outer ring. And that's the number that we're gonna use. Once we find that 70, which would be here on my watch, we're gonna align that to the 12. When we align it to the 12, guess what it's gonna do? It's gonna actually create our equation. We're saying 12 gallons of gas at $70. That's gonna allow me to quickly look over and say to myself, hey, if I'm at 12 and 70, if I only need seven gallons of gas, it's going to point upwards and tell me that I'm looking at around $40 to $41. This is the easiest thing that you can do. I know it looks complicated, but it's extremely simple. It does take some playing around with and getting used to. So I do suggest when you buy your watch, just like any of your other fun, fine toys, spend some time with it. A lot of times because we haven't spent time with it, that's why we feel like it's broken or it has an issue. And it really just needs some love and care and attention from us. If you have any questions, please give us a call here at Swiss Watch Expo. I thank you so much again for tuning in. Please leave your comments below and let us know how you feel here at Swiss Watch Expo.